Painter, the pan is here. Hello everybody, my name is Sailor7, and today we're talking about kidnapping, racism, misogyny, aggravated assault. Peter Pan is my favorite childhood movie. Not exactly for those reasons, but you know, can't go wrong. There's quite a few Peter Pan movies. There's the new one, the Steven Spielberg one, the one I don't like, you get the picture. Today we're talking about the Disney one, released in 1953, as well as the book it was based on, Peter Pan and Wendy, which I actually read in preparation for this video. Wow, is this Sailor 7 or an imposter because I can't tell? Since when did I try at making videos? Anyways, back to the movie, this one's my favorite because not only is it the best and most magical, but also the most problematic, which makes it very fun to talk about and show to other people who have no idea what they're about to witness. The book was written by this guy, J.M. Barry, and if you want to know more about him, there's another good movie called Finding Neverland that follows his story, and it's also the movie that this meme comes from. On the other hand, Peter Pan, the movie, was directed by these three guys I don't know anything about, so next. Why'd I even include that part? British! The story opens in London, on a quiet street in Bloomsbury. No, it doesn't. It opens on a screen telling you the movie is racist. But anyways, these opening scenes do two things very well. It informs the average viewer about the main character, Wendy, her two brothers, as well as her mother and father. Yes, father? Would you kindly... But it also informs all the film students watching that the directors of this movie are obsessed with using shadows. I really like this opening scene. It's a nice slice of life at the Darling family. We learn about the caring Mrs. Darling and the more authoritarian Mr. Darling who commands respect and good Soviet behavior. All the kids have separate personalities. Wendy is the oldest but isn't quite ready to grow up, much like Peter Pan. She's happy in the nursery, a symbol of her childhood, but Mr. Darling wants her to, and I quote, grow the fuck up wanker. There's also two brothers, Michael, the youngest, and John, the infamous middle child. Their personalities are best described as child and British. My name is John. Also, there's a funny dog. What the dog doing? So there's a special party tonight, probably at the Dorcia, and the Darlings are invited. But before they can go, Mr. Darling trips and gets absolutely folded in five seconds. He blames it on the dog. Now that the dog's gone, here comes the pedophile, I mean Peter Pan, he's here to steal back his shadow, which was stolen by the dog. Wait, how the fuck? Yeah, this scene is awesome. Tinkerbell is introduced, giving zero shits about Peter's shadow and just admiring herself in the mirror. Meanwhile, Peter fist fights himself so hard Wendy wakes up. She talks for a whole minute, so Peter Pan hits her with the... Girls talk too much. Yes, girls talk too... Uh -huh. On a serious note, this film does introduce Peter and Tinkerbell very well. Tinkerbell has this jealousy subplot around Wendy for the remainder of the film, and its start here is understandable. She's known Peter for a long time, they're obviously very good friends, and she doesn't want anyone else to take that away. Peter Pan, the spirit of youth as he calls himself, hates one thing, and that's growing up. So when Wendy starts talking about how my dad called me a wanker and wants me to grow up, Peter's like, no. And he kidnaps the children. Also, You Can Fly is a banger song and the visuals are beautiful, especially the clock tower scene and the transition into Neverland. Mmm, peak cinema. So, Neverland is basically just America, but we'll get into that later. First, we're introduced to Captain Hook and the Pirate Gang. These dudes, along with Pirates of the Caribbean, were the reason my channel's named Sailor 7. The reason Sailor is spelled wrong is because I'm an idiot. I'm guessing if you've watched any other Peter Pan reviews, you've already heard this, but Captain Hook is an awesome villain and Smee is an amazing sidekick. The two work together so well comedically, and they knock it out of the park every scene they're in. This is also the first time we see good and bad are more subjective than we were led to believe. Captain Hook is only pursuing Peter Pan out of revenge for cutting off his hand and feeding it to a crocodile. Peter Pan just laughed this off and let it fuel his ego. 
What do you hear about the time I cut off Hook's hand and threw it to the crocodile? But on the other hand, Hook does commit attempted murder multiple times and even team kills his men for being annoying. Then again, Peter kidnaps kids and then starves them on an island according to the book. So really, the only quote-unquote good guy is Wendy, and you get to decide which one of these two you're rooting for. Final thing I'll say about this scene is it introduces the Crocodile, this force of nature type villain who swallowed Hook's hand along with an alarm clock. So whenever he's nearby, you hear a ticking, which Captain Hook is obviously afraid of. Well, back to the story, after getting nearly JFK'd, Tinkerbell brings the gang to the island, and this is where the differences in the book and movie start to show. Basically, Tinkerbell is still jealous AF and tells the Lost Boys to shoot Wendy out of the sky. They do just that, and in the movie, they miss, Peter catches her, time to cuss out Tinkerbell. In the book, they shoot an arrow through her chest, she falls down on the floor, starts bleeding out, the kids are traumatized, Peter shows up and says let's build her a house, so they do. Building the house takes an entire chapter, I'm sorry, what? I guess I can't complain because I did unironically enjoy this chapter, but it's still very weird. After this incident, the Lost Boys go off with the British boys to explore Neverland, and the environments used here are so cool. It really gives you the vibe check of the island, you get to know its inhabitants including- oh fuck no. Okay, I'll keep this brief. This is a Disney movie made in the 50s, it has some stereotypical imagery which is the reason this movie gets so much backlash. Let's just say there's a reason these guys didn't return in the sequel. Anyways, to wrap it up, I love this movie, I wish these racist undertones weren't in it because it's the one thing that keeps it from being my favorite, but it's still an enjoyable movie nonetheless. Bruh. Okay, so I completely agree with this title. Peter Pan and Wendy visit the Mermaid Lagoon while the Lost Boys are still off touring Neverland. This is like when your family splits up at Disneyland because your sister wants to go and see the princesses, but you don't really care and you want to go on the Star Wars ride. I think I'm projecting a little bit here, but anyways, this scene is fun. Nails in more of the jealousy plot of everybody loves Peter Pan. He's like Belle Delphine. It's a pretty bad comparison, but you get the gist. Oh shit, it's Captain Hook. He's taken a page out of Pan's book and started kidnapping girls. Peter doesn't like being copied, so he starts an epic prank where he pretends to be Captain Hook and tells Smee to let the girl go. In the movie, Captain Hook just finds him and attempts another assassination, but I like the book version better, where Captain Hook uses Peter's ego against him, tricking him into revealing himself. What follows is our first battle, it's Captain Hook versus Peter Pan, featuring Wendy who does nothing and Smee the best cheerleader out here. The fight's awesome, Peter gives Smee a gun and tricks him into shooting Hook, that's banger. The sword fight's cool, Hook fell off and the crocodile claps him so hard he's in rehab the next scene. This part's mostly comic relief, but it does reveal what all this jealousy plotline has been building towards, the kidnapping of Tinkerbell. But before we do that, it's time for... Oh shit, we already talked about this. John hits a bong so hard Snoop Dogg paid his respects. Also, I'm not racist, but this song slaps. Top 10 Sailor 7 quotes right there. Okay, so here we are. Cap Hook is looking more suave than the Queen of England, and Smee is crying more than everybody who has to live in England. I like this scene. Funny, dramatic, and even though Tinkerbell betrays Peter, she was tricked into doing so and immediately regrets it. Still, my favorite takeaway is that Peter Pan lives in the goddamn hangman's tree, and when you see it in the next scene, there's an obvious noose just hanging from it. What the fu- This is why Peter Pan is my favorite Disney movie. Nothing is held back, and that makes it all the more entertaining to watch. The scene in the hangman's tree is definitely one of the most important from a story perspective, but it's also the most boring scene for me. It's just Wendy remembers, oh shit, remember when we had mothers and then they all sing and Peter thinks, this sucks balls. And I agree. Until Wendy's sad singing overlaps with the scene of Captain Hook outside the tree. This is when you realize he's close to winning and nobody has any idea. The British boys decide to leave for home and the lost boys decide they're going with. Peter isn't very happy about this, but he pretends he doesn't care because he doesn't want to admit things aren't going his way for once. 
In the book, this chapter is a bit more intense. After saving Tiger Lily, the natives vow to protect Peter's home and they lay in wait for the pirate outside, leading to a big battle. But either way, book or movie, kids get kidnapped. Again. But whereas in the book, Captain Hook replaces Peter's medicine with a vial of poison, which is kind of weak, not gonna lie, but it does the job, in the movie, he makes a pipe bomb. Captain Hook is a goddamn terrorist. He's also a marketing genius for delivering such effective propaganda that the kidnapped kids, who've spent a week with Peter, immediately want to sign up with his team after one 15 second song. Oh, and the threat of walking the plank and drowning, but whatever. So the pipe bomb goes off. Peter's dead, just kidding, Tinkerbell got her redemption arc and saved him. I like that. Also, the scene where she's dying in the rubble always hit me as a child, and I think if she did die, it would have been a more emotional sacrifice, but then the kids would have no way of getting home. So anyways, Wendy walks a plank. I love this scene, there is no splash, so something must be up, and Hook's first reaction is to game end his teammate. Then Peter Pan shows up. This battle is le epic. Not only do Pan and Hook give it their all in choreography and line delivery, but the Lost Boys also get something to do this time. Interestingly, the build-up to the battle is entirely different in the book. There was no explosion, Tinkerbell drank the poisoned medicine so Peter wouldn't have to. She almost dies, but nope, not yet, we haven't made 30 Tinkerbell movies yet. Peter Pan then vows it's Hook or Me this time, implying one of them has to go, which is also the title of the chapter, that's awesome. To get on board the ship, Peter mimics the crocodile's ticking sound, because that idiot swallowed a clock, remember? This terrifies Hook, who forgets about the kids, and meanwhile Peter kills all the pirates, sets the boys free, starts cross-dressing as Wendy, and then reveals himself to Hook by flinging off the dress. Very gangster, I would say. Okay, enough talking. The ending is different in both versions, so I'll have to explain it twice, oh well. In the movie, Hook takes advantage of Peter's ego, calling him a coward for flying, prompting them to have a no-flying, no-scrubs final matchup at the top of the ship. I do love this version, it looks amazing, but right at the climax it ends with Peter just pulling the pirate flag over Hook. And every time I watch this movie, I can't help but feel that's a bit anticlimactic. Then he falls down to the crocodile and gets chased off into the distance to return another day. Still a cool ending battle, especially if you like Hook and wanted him to survive, because in the book, these bitches fight to the death. As Peter said, it's Hook or me this time, and so at the end he flies towards Hook, Lunge kicks him off the boat and into the mouth of the crocodile, where Hook finally dies. Too bad the book has two more chapters after this of just falling action. Nobody wants to read that many pages after the main antagonist is already dead, Mr. Barry. Please wrap it up. Anyways, back to the movie. Peter learned that sometimes you have to let things go, let people grow up and just move on. Not sure how he learned that, but it's a kid's film. I don't care. Tinkerbell gives the ship Reddit gold and they all fly home. Remember the parents? Well, at the party, I guess Mr. Darling changed his mind, and Wendy doesn't have to grow up anymore, so that's fun. Finally, after believing their children are schizophrenic for the entire movie, the Darlings see this Peter Pan in the night sky, and decide to call the police. The end. Winning creator, for now I'm flying. Peter Pan is a whimsical and enjoyable movie, filled with beautiful visuals, great characters, and a memorable story that keeps you watching. Peter Pan is a certified hood classic, and I give it a 9 out of 10. That's right, I only subtracted one point for the racism. Yes, I'm biased. Thanks for watching, and good night.